Hi friends, welcome back to Health Rethink. We were trying to get good information for this renovation project that we all tend to get involved in, which is trying to renovate the health of our bodies. God formed man out of the dust of the earth, and then he's, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Now this is so remarkable because it traces right down to the very smallest units that the body is made of. The body is this complex piece of machinery and it's made of tiny little components, small little building blocks called cells. You may very well have heard of the word cell before, but I'm sure that even if this video were to get a million hits, 99% of those viewers would never ever have had the opportunity to see what a cell looks like under a microscope. I encourage you to go do yourself a favor and go and Google pictures of cells under the microscope and I'll try and put some links in the description box as well. But today we're going to try and understand what is a cell really. Cells, as I've mentioned, are the small little units that make up the human body. And there are a variety of different types and sizes and shapes of cells. The different types of cells look alike because they function alike. For instance, all the little cells that make up muscle will look the same. Muscle cells. Then you have different cells again that have a completely different shape and function which is the kidney cells. Then you've got a heart muscle cell, which looks different from this muscle that's in your stomach, for instance. You have uh, bone cells, you've got skin cells, you've got brain cells, and they all have different shapes and sizes. Now, let's take the skin as an example. Your skin cells are flat cells, and they pack together and layer together to make the different layers of your skin. But these cells from your skin, for instance, don't get the oxygen supply from the air around. It comes from within the body. So we need to explore this a little bit deeper. How do the cells get all the things that they need and what do they actually need? Now, before I go any further with this explanation, I'd like you to imagine that every single cell is a building because every cell is a complicated little thing. The, uh, the buildings in a city, for example, all have different shapes and functions. You've got a whole lot of buildings that look similar, similar if they are houses, for instance, and that makes up a residential area for the city. You have you buildings that are specifically for shops, factories, um, storehouses, warehouses. All these different buildings have different shapes, different functions, and different things happening inside of them. It is exactly the same with cells. In exactly the same way as your home requires a constant supply of certain ingredients, so does the cell. If your house, for instance, has a um, pipeline for water coming there, but the water is cut off every now and then, it makes for quite an inconvenient situation in the house. In South Africa, we're well versed with the concept of load shedding, which is when the electricity is switched off. So you've got electrical lines and supply, but if you don't have some kind of battery system in your home that stores electricity, then when load shedding is activated, you just don't have any le electricity for a number of hours. In the same way, the cell has to have a supply of those ingredients constantly. And the cell does not have a way to store the majority of these things. For example, oxygen cannot be stored. These things have to be brought to the cell constantly. Now you might ask the question, how does a cell get all of these things that it needs to stay alive? Just like the buildings in a city where there is a roadway system that brings or makes way for delivery vehicles to bring things. Or in the same way that you've got electrical lines and you've got pipelines for water, in the same way, cells get their supplies from the blood. Every cell has to have oxygen, a constant supply of oxygen. Every minute that the oxygen supply is cut off from any cell, that cell is busy dying or getting damaged. Every cell needs water delivered to it. Every single cell needs vitamins and minerals, protein, carbohydrates, fats. These things have to be supplied to every cell. And that supply has to be constant. The cells in the body also need waste removed from them. In the process of them using up the oxygen, using up the carbohydrates, processing things, doing their normal functions for whatever that particular cell has been made for, in that process, waste is being formed. Um, some of that can be quite toxic, and that waste has to be taken away from the cell. The blood is the transport medium for all of the ingredients that the cell needs. 
and the blood flows in a network of pipes called the blood vessels. We have the blood vessel which basically makes close contact with different cell types and through the wall of the blood vessel there's an exchange of these different things happening. Things are delivered to the cell and waste is taken out from the cell and transported away in the blood. I think the key thing to just emphasize is that in order to keep that cell alive it needs to have a close connection with a blood vessel and there's got to be some good blood flowing through that blood vessel. Now what is a blood vessel? You'll hear me use this term often because it's a term that talks about all the different pipes with blood in it in the whole body but there are different types. We're not going to be expanding on this too much in this video but basically there are a couple of different kinds of blood vessels. Blood vessels which is the pipes where the blood flows through is like a one-way traffic system similar to what you would have one-way roads or streets in a city. By one way I mean that the blood only flows into one direction or in one direction. So for instance arteries have blood that flows away from the heart. The heart acts as a pump and it pushes and pumps and it pushes that blood out into the arteries and away from the heart towards the cells in the body. As those arteries expand they start off with big blood vessels, big arteries, and they branch out into smaller and smaller and smaller little arteries until they actually become so tiny that we call them capillaries. Now it's at the capillary level that um, those capillaries are in close contact with the different cells where the exchange can happen of the ingredients that the cell needs. Then once those ingredients have been delivered to a cell and the blood needs to flow back towards the heart, we call that blood vessel a vein. It's all connected into one piping system, but that's basically just how we term it. Arteries is blood flowing away from the heart and veins contain blood that flow towards the heart. Now, this technicality is not really so important, but what I want you to see on this particular picture is this concept of how the arteries and veins branch out. In this particular picture, it only shows the arteries, which is usually drawn in diagrams as red. They're all the same color in the body. But um, we're seeing here how the big blood vessels are close to the heart and they branch out and branch out. As they move into the limbs, as they go to the different organs, they branch into tiny little branches and eventually into the capillaries. Blood vessels are pipes. That's all it really is. And it provides that flow, flow area, that flow system. It provides the roadway, essentially, for blood to flow all around the body. The blood is that transport vehicle that takes all these different ingredients to each and every cell of the body. This is another picture that just helps to illustrate what these blood vessels are. They are literally pipes. And these pipes, the wall of them, of these pipes, are actually slightly different from the pipes that you would have like in the water pipes in your home. In the sense that these pipes are made up of layers and layers, amongst others, layers of muscle. The muscle either contracts and makes those pipes a little bit smaller or the muscle relaxes so that the pipes can be bigger. And this accommodates in different ways. I won't get too technical about this right now but it accommodates different conditions so that the blood is always flowing. You see the body is made to ensure that the blood continues to flow and the body will do all sorts of things. It'll compensate in all kinds of methods not just by changing the um, di diameter of the blood vessels, but it will accommodate in various other ways how well the heart is pumping, how slowly or how fast it is pumping. Um, it will accommodate with chemicals, it will accommodate with how you breathe. All sorts of things are done to ensure at all times that the blood is flowing as well as it possibly can. Because like we said, every cell is dependent on what the blood is able to deliver and the waste it is able to remove. The Bible has another verse that says, in fact, there are several verses in the Bible that says the life is in the blood. This cannot be more technically correct. Blood carries the vital ingredients to sustain the life of every single cell. The minute that is cut off, cells start to degenerate, change shape, act abnormally, or they die. Why is this important? Why is it so important for us to understand this when we're talking about renovating our health? The basic reason why this is so crucial to understand is that if we want to renovate our health, in other words, if we want to allow the body to heal from illness or disease, 
if we want to help the body to regenerate damaged tissue, if we want the body to form new healthy cells, we have to supply the right ingredients. And that has three components. We have to provide the right ingredients that will go into the blood in order to make good quality blood. We have to ensure that the pipes are open. The blood vessels have to be open. The blood vessels have to be open everywhere in the body so that the blood can actually reach everywhere in the body. And the blood has to flow at the right pace, at the right speed, at the right pressure, so that as that blood flows through the whole body, that those ingredients can be transferred out of the blood and into the cells. Let's repeat that. If the blood is not of a good quality, if the veins and arteries and capillaries are not open enough to allow the blood to flow, and if the blood is not flowing under the right conditions, then the ingredients, the right ingredients, cannot be delivered to every cell in the body. And the waste products can also then not be removed, which means those toxic waste products build up and build up and build up, damaging as that goes. In our next videos, we're going to be expanding on these topics, topics a little bit more. We're going to be unpacking how these three specific components impact every single disease that you can name or can think of. I want to challenge you. Take a moment to think of a health condi condition that you think does not trace back to good quality blood, good open arteries and veins and capillaries, and good flow of blood. Think of a condition, try and think of a condition that does not relate to these three things and put them in the comment section below. The life is in the blood. If we can supply the right ingredients to the cells, the body is created to be able to heal and recover from damage, from disease, from illness. Now, it is true that some people might never receive a full recovery. Sometimes the damage is too far, too great. But many times, the reason why the body is not healing is because there's a problem in one of these three things. In our future videos, we're going to unpack how we can improve them, how we can improve the quality of our blood, how we can help to salvage arteries and veins that may have already been damaged. And we're going to look at how we can ensure that the blood is flowing the way that it's supposed to be flowing. Thank you for watching with us again. Please do share your comments and your questions with us and join us again next time as we continue to rethink our health.